Hi, uh, my name is Ron Simons. I first enrolled here at Cal Poly in the fall of 1959. I was an ag major. In those days it was called agronomy. Today it's called ag science. Uh, nobody's really sure what I do and it's, it's been that way for, for most of my career. It's, it's how I've lasted as long as I have. Yeah, actually I, I wasn't uh, in line to come to Cal Poly Pomona at all. I, but then it was in the, uh, I recall the spring of my senior year in high school, my parents came to me and said, you know, we're, we're learning more about this ag program at this uh, Cal Poly. And you know, I, here I'd been thinking I'm going up north all these years. And I, I, so I agreed, I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go there the first quarter. Of course, I, I, I got here and showed up uh, uh, kind of those few days before classes. And I was kind of hanging around that first night and one of my uh, dorm mates kind of I guess saw me hanging over in the corner and suggested that I might want to go with him to attend a meeting uh, in reference to building a rose parade float for the next year the 1960 parade. I was excited I, I honestly I'll be honest to tell you the truth I, I didn't know Cal Poly had a float but I went down with them and uh, literally got hooked and as they say the rest is history I, I've been involved with it ever since 1960. Hey, Ron's, Ron's always been known for um for let's say uh, embellishing um, a few stories that he that he brings up and around. So over the years, Ron, I've I've, I've learned to separate the, the 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 real stuff from the from the embellished stuff. How's that? Okay. One of the incidences we had that kind of uh, just about probably got me tossed out of school. I somehow got on to deciding I was going to experiment uh, brewing my own hard cider highly illegal back in those days for me to do this but I'm up in my room on that third corner up there and uh, the process is you know you just put the cap on lightly because it's always effervescing all the time so it's got to release the gas so one night I did do this I, I had put the cap on moved it down underneath my desk and I got back I don't know it was maybe 2:30, 3 o'clock in the morning and reached down to pick the jug up as in a glass gallon jug and I reached down and I all I did was start to lift it and the entire gallon jug blew up. I had forgotten to loosen the cap to allow it to continue to effervesce. And I'm standing there with just a ring of glass and the, and the metal cap in my hand and an entire gallon, I, I never could, could conceive of this, but an entire gallon of hard cider went all the way out my room, of course being in the corner, literally turned the corner in the hall and went down the stairs. Now. Uh, if you've never smelled hard cider before, it's it's pretty pungent, and pretty soon guys are coming out of the room. What the heck is that smell? What's going on? Of course, I'm mad dashing, running around, grabbing every towel I can and a rag, and trying to clean the mess up. And I finally did get it pretty well pecked up, but you could smell that for literally weeks, if not months later. That was for many. No, that was kind of the end of my. Uh, brewing, let's say, experiences uh, for those days. It wasn't great. I met Ron March the 7th, 1970. Uh, I was a student at the time. He was the assistant to the president and director of alumni affairs at the time. But uh, uh, he's been giving me grief ever since. <laughs> he is a person that you can always go to for whatever that you need. He will help you He's the most helpful person on campus, not most knowledgeable, passionate about the university. Uh, he knows more about the university than anybody. He is the one, he is Mr. Cal Poly Pomona. Ron Simons has played the most important role with the Rose Float ever since he was an undergraduate student. It is his uh, passion. Every year, it doesn't matter whether he's had a kidney transplant or he's broken a leg, or whatever it might be, when it's time to get the rose float ready, Ron's there. He's been there on crutches, he's been there rolling in wheelchairs, but whatever it takes, Ron's gonna be there to make sure that Cal Poly Pomona and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo produce the best float possible. Well, you know, I've got a lot of fun memories in this place. I'm, I literally celebrated my 18th birthday here when I was a freshman working on the float. And this last year, I just celebrated my 70th birthday. I mean, other than three years in the military, I, I've been here for a number of years uh, as either a student or as an administrator. You know, one of the things Cal Poly floats are noted for is their animation. And we've won a number of animation, major animation awards in the parade, starting with our float in 1968 uh, called the uh, Mouse That Got Away. Uh, I had the pleasure of being the chairman of that project again when I came back from the military. And, 
re-entered Cal Poly to get a second baccalaureate degree, uh, I was offered the opportunity to be chair, uh, the dean of students who had been my mentor and even my Rose Float advisor when I was a student, called me in and said, how'd you like to be chair? And I kind of thought about that. I said, well, it's about September the 27th right now, and we have to have a parade on January 1. That's about 90 days away. Uh, we have no design, no committee, and no money, but yet we're supposed to produce a float. And he said, well, what do you think? And I said, yeah, let's do it, you know. <laughs> and we came together, and that was the first year we won the animation award for a mouse that got away. You know, whenever I see that Cal Poly float come into view of whether I'm there personally on site at the corner of Orange Grove in Colorado or whether it's on television and I see it, tremendous sense of pride and, and accomplishment and I memories flash back. But you know, uh, I'm going to tell you that I'm probably no different than all of our other students and alumni that are watching this. They, they all take great pride in it. You know, we don't have a football program that gets us national exposure, but then we have a Rose Float program that gets us international exposure and more than any, I would say, football programs ever accomplished. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been here at Cal Poly now 36 years. I think I've known Ron all 36 of them. Uh, Ron, to me, is, you know, it, you know the, the title Mr. Cal Poly kind of fits. It really fits good. Uh, I know he's been over every square inch of this campus, every square inch of this orchard here, every square inch of most of the farmland here as well. Well, you know, my uh, career at Cal Poly actually came about as a result of my activity in Rose Float. It was uh, one post-parade banquet in 1968 that then the newly appointed president at Cal Poly, his name was Bob Kramer, it literally kind of offered me the opportunity to come to work at Cal Poly. I literally uh, showed up in the president's office in the uh, second week of May of 1969, and his words to me exactly were, what do you want to do? And I uh, lamented to the president that while we had our own alumni association, our own board of directors, we still were having our alumni program being administered by the alumni office in San Luis Obispo because we didn't have one on the Pomona campus. His words to me were, go start one. It was like deja vu with my Rose Float days. There was no budget, no space, no staff, just with the charge, go start one. If you want any piece of history, if you want to know anything about anything that has gone on campus in the past, he is the go-to person. Ron has been a jewel and a champion for students from the Imperial Valley. Um, we have a student right now uh, who actually came up. Ron's supporting him with a scholarship and everything else in his father-in-law's name, and uh, we really, really appreciate that. And over the years, Ron's been, been there for all of the kids, but especially for the kids from the Imperial Valley. My, my good longtime friend, mentor, and had been the advisor to me in Rose Float, was soon to become the Dean of Students. His office was literally right down here at the end of this hall. And I remember walking in telling him, I, I need some place to have an office. And so he said, well, look, he says, I've, I've got this little supply room just right outside my office over here. And he says, we could probably clear out all the files and boxes and let you move in there. Well, the room was really almost no wider than the door. It was a little wider, uh, probably about maybe uh, five feet maximum. <clears throat> they moved in an old metal desk that was built by the prison industry back in those days. And, and I would get in and I'd have to go around sideways to get by my desk in the wall. And then I'd have to step over my chair because I couldn't pull it back. There wasn't enough room. Now, if you all would come to visit me, anybody would come in, I'd have to leave the door open, and we'd bring two chairs in from another room. We'd set them up right out here in the hallway, and we would talk. And, of course, people are still walking back and forth and traffic in here, and they're kind of at the hallway. But, you know, you, you made it work, you know, and that was kind of the meager beginning of what we call today now university advancement. That's where it all got started. This is its home right here. When I think of Ron, I, I, I really do think of Cal Poly legacy and the, uh, the imprint he's really made on this campus over the years. Um, you know, not only, not only with the facility itself and the history and, and the rose float and, uh, and all of the crops unit and all the facilities that we've got down here, but also his impact on students over the years. You can't look at this campus and not see Ron Simons. He has been instrumental in so many things on this campus. He's been here for so long that he has left his mark everywhere. Kellogg West, uh, he's left his mark on Agriscapes, he's left his mark all over the campus because he's been so integrally involved in the campus. 
as the first director of alumni affairs, uh, working under Dr. Labowney. He's just been someone that has had a tremendous impact, not only in terms of the physical structure of the campus, but also in terms of the humans that come to the campus and, and inhabit it. Ron is one of those individuals that has always had my back. I could always count on Ron for anything. I could call him up and say, Ron, I need this. And before the day is done, Ron would have whatever it was available. And I think that more importantly than all of that, though, is that uh, I consider myself to be a friend of Ron's, and I think that he feels that he's a friend of mine as well. Ron has been known for many things on campus, including the Rose Float, of course. Uh, and that's why they call him Mr. Cal Poly Pomona, soon to be Dr. Cal Poly Pomona. We have a process on campus that we use to identify individuals that we're going to recognize uh, with the honorary doctorates. And Ron is just one of those individuals that has had such a tremendous influence on this campus and a tremendous impact on this campus that it was something that took very little thought on my part to approve when it came after going through the evaluation on the campus. Ron is just someone that is very deserving of this recognition. I'm intended to receive this honorary doctorate at our, our commencement ceremonies this June, and I'm still having a hard time getting my arms around the significance of, of that award. Uh, you know, I, I, like I say, it was almost like a go into shock to, to get this. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so humbled to, to receive something like this. Uh, don't know how I could be worthy of it. You know, of, of all the campuses I mentioned, how beautiful this campus is, it, it also is, I think, uh, it's, it's just been a wonderful place. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't think of a better place to, to spend one's career or life, for that matter.